What's up, Jam Stackers? I'm Phil Miller. No, not that Phil Miller. I'm a senior DevRel engineer at Daily, and that means I get to work on all kinds of awesome projects involving docs and blogs and tutorials. You can find me on most social channels at Phil Millman. Uh, I'm coming to you remotely from Hamilton, Ontario, Canada, about one hour west of Toronto. Uh, and I'm a recovering musician, although I'm clearly not that recovered. Um, and I'm hoping to use this sort of conference meme format of how it started, how it's going uh, to, to frame our, our discussion today. So let's kick it off with an awkward photo of me playing drums. This is, this is how it started many years ago. Uh, and this is how it's going. I'm still doing it, but I'm also playing synths and other stuff. So I, th I think it's going great. Uh, let's talk video, how it started, uh, video calling specifically. This is a picture of a picture phone, which debuted at the World's Fair in 1964. It allowed you to make a call between New York, Washington, and Chicago at a very high cost. But how's it going today? Well, what if I told you we could have a video call right in these slides? Obviously, my camera's not going to work because I'm using it right now, but I think someone else might be able to join us. Hey everyone. That seems a little bit easier than a phone that only works between three cities, don't you think? So let's talk about the MIDI side of things. We're going to make some music with MIDI. Uh, so let's talk about how it started. Uh, this is a picture of the Prophet 600. This is one of the first synthesizers to have MIDI. Um, this is a TR909, Roland's first drum machine to have MIDI. All you techno heads might be familiar with this. And this is the MSQ 700, an early uh, sequencer, also one of the first ones to have MIDI. But how's it going? Uh, if you're sensing a theme here, you can do a lot in a browser now. This is an HTML5 drum machine, which allows us to emulate some of those drum machines we were just talking about right here in a browser. And it sounds pretty good. What else? BandLab. This is really cool. I actually mixed a track for a friend in the browser on the weekend. This is a full-blown digital audio workstation that works right in your browser. You can invite your friends and it's free. And then LudoTune. This one came out fairly recently. This is kind of like a modern quirky take on a sequencer. Bonus points if you recognize what song this is. Just know I'm not going to give you up. And know that we're in the middle of a browser renaissance. It's never been easier to, to make music or do so many things right in your browser. And finally, how it started. I'm sure we all recognize these... Rat's Nest server rooms, I don't miss them. How about FTPing into a site to update it? I definitely don't miss that. And I definitely don't miss using source control before Git. But how's it going now? Uh, well, I think we're all here because we love Netlify and tools like it. You can deploy your entire application with you know, two words in a command line, in this case, three, if you count the flag. Uh, or you can just have it set up automatically whenever you push to your Git repo. Uh, you know, the first time that this, <laughs> I used this, it felt like magic. So all that said, let's put it all together and create something awesome. First, we'll start, we'll talk about our stack for jamming. Some might call it a jam stack. Uh, the app, it's a view app, but you could use any framework or no framework. Uh, in this case, I adapted this from an older project and it's just created via Vue CLI. 
uh, next up, we're going to do this. We're going to have a video call. We're going to do the whole real time collaboration thing. Uh, so because we're doing it in a browser, we're going to use WebRTC. For those who aren't familiar with that, WebRTC is kind of like a loose grouping of different protocols. Um, we're, we won't get into the specifics, and thankfully we don't have to, but just understand that there's a bunch of stuff under the hood happening to, to make your video call work. And just, a, just a, you know, touching on the sort of operating modes of a WebRTC, WebRTC video call, um, Typically, it's peer-to-peer. -peer. WebRTC is a peer-to-peer -peer protocol, but for your larger calls, there's usually a server just because it, would, it wouldn't scale to have every peer sending data to every other peer. Uh, and if that all sounds complicated, well, that's because it is. Um, and that's where daily comes in. Uh, we take all that complicated WebRTC stuff and just make it work for you. So you can focus on building your application like we are today. Uh, and, you know, the simplest way to do it is just with a few lines of code. When you saw earlier, when we had a call in the slides, it was basically this code right here. Next up, we talked about MIDI. Um, there is a MIDI implementation in most browsers called Web MIDI. Uh, unfortunately, if you are, uh, you know, one of those staunch Apple users, it's not going to work for you. So you're going to need a Chromium browser for this. And again, this is based on you know, a protocol from 1983. So it's a bit esoteric, uh, which is why we're going to use web MIDI just to make it a little bit more digestible and easier to interact with. Um, and finally, you know, I'll just talk about browsers. We're still building an app in a browser, but you know, we're going to throw it back and control some hardware with it. Uh, in this case, we're controlling two awesome boxes from a company called Electron, the Digitact and the Digitone. The DigiTact is a drum computer. Uh, it's a sampler, it's a drum machine, uh, but it's also a MIDI sequencer. So you, you can use it to control other hardware if you want to. And the Digitone is a, a modern take on the FM synth. Uh, it, it doesn't matter if, if you don't know what that means, just know that it it's you know gonna create that awesome synthy sound that you probably identify with 80s music um, and many other sounds as well. And it's also a MIDI sequencer. Uh, so, all that said, we've got drums, we've got some melody and bass and all the other stuff. So we're, we're, we're good to go. Uh, so quick app preview, uh, and shout out to Jess Mitchell for making this look pretty. She is much better at this than me. Um, we've got, as you can see here, there's like an area where the call is going to happen. We won't get into that just yet. We're going to, I'm going to save the, the demo for the end. Um, and then We've got sort of playback controls, so you can play or stop the music, and then you can mute different tracks either on, on either of the boxes. In this case, there's four tracks on one of them and eight on the other. Um, you notice there's mute and unmute. MIDI is a one-way protocol, so we just kind of click it and hope that it happens. Uh, and then we've got the ability to switch different patterns. These, these boxes have the notion of sort of like pre-saved patterns that we'll switch between. And then we've got some controls here to change like the effect settings for delay and reverb. Uh, and that's, that's pretty much it. I, it's a little Spartan, but you know, it's, it only takes a little bit to have some fun here. As I s mentioned before, this is a view app. So we've basically put everything in one big, uh, view component called main.view, you know, naming things is hard. Um, and even if you're not familiar with view, don't worry about it. Basically there's a template which corresponds to the the UI you just saw. There's going to be some JavaScript uh, which controls sort of like the interactive parts of the page, and then some styles just to make it look pretty. And again, shout out to Jess for those. Um, so like just just kind of stepping through here, top to bottom, we've got our call container, which is where our video call will get rendered. Uh, like I said before, the beauty of Daily is that it. We've got this awesome pre-built interface that will just sort of, you can just drop into your application. Uh, more on that in a bit. And then we've got all of our different sort of uh, interface controls. So a bunch of buttons, uh, some input sliders, that kind of thing. And, and a little area for some a message to show up when someone does something. Um, as you'll notice, most of these buttons have a click handler. Uh, you know, like the join button, for example, calls a method called join call, which we'll see allows you to join the call. Uh, 
And then most of the other ones that are specifically about web MIDI are going to send a control message, which sends a message to the synth and tells it to do, some, to do something. Uh, that could be play, stop, or, you know, mute or unmute. Um, that's basically it. The slight difference with the sliders is instead of a click handler, it's a change event. So we're, whenever that value changes, we're going to call control message like we do with the other ones, send a name for the event and uh, the value. So looking down into the JavaScript part of it, um, we're importing dailyjs, which is the way we interact with the daily API and create our daily call. Uh, as mentioned before, we're using web MIDI to make interacting with the web MIDI APIs just a little bit saner. Uh, and then we've got this message map. Um, for those of you who are probably peeking on the other side of the screen here, uh, it's just a set of mappings from these sort of macro messages into MIDI, actual MIDI messages. So in this case, each one of them has a method, which is a method in web MIDI JS. And then we're sending uh, a message. Sometimes that could be static or there could be a value with, associated with it. Uh, and that is being sent to a certain device to, depending on the message. So it could be the dig attack or the dig tone. Pretty straightforward. Um, Next up, looking back here at our main.view component, uh, we'll get into the, the call stuff. Um, I've hard-coded a room URL here. You could create them on the fly if you wanted to. I just wanted to keep it simple um, since it's just me in this call. Uh, and then we've got our, our config options here for the room. In this case, we're, we're passing in the room URL. Uh, we're gonna show, we wanna show a leave button so people can leave the call if they want. Uh, and then just some styles for the iframe itself, just to make it look pretty. Again, shout out to Jess. Um, and then we're getting into the sort of view specific stuff, but it should be pretty easy to reason about even if you're not familiar with view. This is kind of setting up our initial state for things like our output devices, uh, some flags like whether there's a local device, local mini, and then keeping lists of participants. Some of this is just stuff I had in here for debugging. Some of it is actually used. Uh, one of the most important things is this call frame that's keeping uh, a copy of the the object that's returned from the daily API so we can use it to interact with our call. Um, so when the component is first mounted, that's what this lifecycle hook here is, um, it's, we're going to get our devices and that's, that's the part that turns web MIDI on, checks for the devices, tells us whether it's enabled or not, blah, blah, blah. Uh, and then if there are devices, we're gonna, like I said, update the state so that we have a, rec uh, a reference to those and we can use that later to send the output. Um, then we're getting into our call stuff. As I mentioned before, there was an, a part in the DOM uh, that's where we're gonna render the iframe. That's what this call wrapper is. Uh, if that exists, then we're going to create the iframe with the call options that we specified before. And then we're gonna wire up all of our event listeners. So whenever something happens in the call, an event is emitted, and then it this is telling it to run a callback. Um, the ones, the most important one we need to consider here is app message. Uh, we're using a method called send app message to send the MIDI messages around. And this is the callback that gets executed when that send app message event fires. Uh, we'll get into that in a little bit more detail in a second. Um, so stepping through the different methods here, we've got join call, which is the one we talked about up top um, whenever you click the join button. So what that, that is going to do is check for a token in the URL, which is a way to, to denote that someone is a host. Hosts, in this case, have elevated privileges. Uh, in our case, I will be the host because I have these synthesizers plugged in locally. Um, yeah, that's that's what join call does. We already talked about get devices. Update participant is just a callback, uh, a function that gets called in a callback whenever we need to update the participant list. So that could be things like participant join, participant left, et cetera. Uh, and then finally, the most important part here, the, the secret sauce, let's call it, is this control message method. 
what what's happening here is if there's a local MIDI device, so in this case, say someone clicks the play button, it's going to send a control message that tells the synthesizer to start playing. Uh, if the, if it's say it's me doing it and I'm I'm connected, then it's going to look up the appropriate thing in our message map here, which is play, and it's going to call the send start method for on the output <laughs> digitone device. And it's going to flash this someone press play message. If one of our remote participants does this because, because they, they're not local, uh, then we're going to call send app message, which is a daily method, which sends a message to each of the clients for all the people who are also remote participants. It will just play the corresponding message that we talked about, but for me, when I receive it as the host, it will send the corresponding mini message to the device. So this is what allows all the remote par participants to control one set of hardware. And that's it. Uh, so, you know, we've got some, a little bit of UI uh, powered by view, and we've got this send app message logic powered by daily. Uh, and that's it. But this is jam stack comp. So we got a jam.
So what next? You just saw what I hope was a, a pretty fun live demo, live, quote unquote. Um, but how, how can we make it better? Uh, first of all, we can, we can add more MIDI. Um, we're, we're only using a very small subset of what these, these devices are capable of, uh, you know, like just some mutes and stuff. We could, we could be doing so much more. Uh, and there's a full list of things that can be implemented there. Um, we can also add more devices. Uh, as you can see, I have many, so that's always a possibility. Uh, you know, possibilities are endless, essentially. Anything that you can plug in and send many messages to is, is fair game, especially if it's CCs and PCs. Um, but I can, I can answer why that's the case in the chat if you want. Uh, and we can do more collaboration, um, because we have a real time audio and video call happening. Uh, we could sample the audio from the call from a remote, remote participant today. Those people had their audio and video turned off because they were just interacting with the buttons, but you know, sky's the limit there. We could also potentially send MIDI from remote participants. Um, we're already kind of doing that. So imagine someone had a MIDI controller hooked up and they twist a button and that sends a message instead of them clicking a button. Um, and we could do something like remote looping. I have a looper pedal that has MIDI on it. So you could, you could send a message to tell it to start looping. So you're kind of like doing real time recording. Uh, and we could have more control over the app itself. Uh, we only had two participant roles today, essentially host and participant, but we could have, you know, listener, and then you could promote listeners to participants and that kind of thing. Uh, and you know, we probably want to implement some sort of command queuing. If there was 20 people in the call and everyone was trying to do something, you don't want all that to happen at once. And because we're using daily, we can always add more features that are just sort of available to us. Um, recording, live streaming, these, these are things that you can do with like one method call. Um, and we use the pre-built UI today because I felt like that was the, a good demonstration of what was possible without adding too much code. Um, but you can build a fully custom call UI too. Uh, and that's probably where I'll take this next. Uh, and lastly, I just want to acknowledge, uh, people and thank some people first, the inspiration for this, the first incarnation of this project was based on GitHub noops or no ops, however you say it, uh, which were kind of like some toy projects that in, were meant to inspire creativity. Um, and more recently I was inspired by Tolman's, uh, Stompenberg, which is a project that allow, well, not a project, it's a product, I guess, that allows you to remotely control guitar pedals in a store. Uh, it's pretty incredible. Uh, next up, I want to thank all the open source people that made this possible. The view team, uh, the maintainer of WebMIDI JS, um, all my awesome coworkers at daily. And lastly, Netlify and the Jamstack Conf team. Uh, this is a great conference. And of course, last thank thank all of you for listening. Cheers. Sit, Jamstack, sit. Woof, woof. Good boy.